Howdy folks, this video is a revival of the video we did about three years ago, I think it was, uh, concerning how John 3.16 had been changed. Well, today I found some more uh, evidence that was going to make a separate video, but since there wasn't any narration in that original video, I thought I'd just combine the two. So, anyway, here we go. Today, the King James Bible renders John 3.16 like this. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. But that's not how it was before these supernatural changes got a hold of them. The Bible used to say, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth on him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. In replaced on, which is a common occurrence now in the word, should replace shall, according to many of the 17th and 18th century books based on the King James, it was shall including the literary works of Charles H. Spurgeon. This verse did change. And here's the proof. This is the book, The Fountain of Love, by Alfred William Snape, dated 1855. And look what we see here. As with all the books and periodicals I'm about to present to you here, it has the verse, Whosoever believeth on him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. I'll be going through these rather quickly, but hey, you got a pause button if you want to stop and read what's there. And here we have Christian Communion. It's by Justin Edwards, dated 1825. Life Scenes from Mission Fields by E.D. Moore from 1857. The American Messenger, dated uh, 1919. Humpty Dumpty, or The Corner Grocery by J. 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 Dana uh, from 1874. Come to the Savior by Richard Weaver Collier, uh, 1862. Northcote Memories uh, by Emily Elizabeth Steele Elliott, 1879. The Old Pass Sermons on the Second Gospel Series uh, by Newt Sehus, 1914. The Reformed Presbyterian from 1855, Mission Tidings from 1922, The Harmony of the Gospels from 1863, Dew of Hermon or Zion's Daily Sacrifice from 1854, An Exposition of the Epistle of Paul the Apostle uh, by John Brown, 1853. Publications, uh, 1854. Luther League Review from 1920. Missionary Addresses uh, by Archibald McLean, 1895. The New England Register, dated 1873. Prayers for the Use of Families, by William J., 1843. A.W. Pink Studies in the Scriptures, by A.W. Pink, 2001. Memoirs and Sermons, etc., Andrew Fuller, 1845. Complete works of Reverend Andrew Fuller from 1845. 
Works, Volume 1, by Emanuel Swedenborg, 1819. Congressional Record of the United States Congress, 1941. Well, here's that new residue we found just today. Several hundred texts proving that our Lord Jesus Christ uh, from 1789. Two sermons preached in the parish church of St. John by John Clowes, 1814. The Missionary Review of the World uh, from 1907. The Medical Missionary, 1894. Northwestern Christian Advocate from 1907. The works of Reverend William J. Uh, by William J. from 1854. The Sunday School World from 1889. Christmas Day from 1800. The Sabbath Recorder from 1925. Lectures on Orangeism and other subjects by Charles Ebenezer Perry, 1892. Leaves of Healing, uh, from 1915. The Friend of Missions, from 1879. Lugo Mission Scrapbook, Thomas Strawn, Shenston, 1888. The Oberlin Evangelist from 1849. Wow, John 316. It just plumb thrills my heart to find this evidence. That scripture is so dear to my heart. It's the first one that I ever learned as a kid. That whosoever believeth on him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Glory to God. I'll place the link to the search that I made to find these new pieces of uh, evidence. This, this residue is wonderful. And... By the way, there's a whole bunch more I didn't even put in this video. Go look at it for yourself. And as always, folks, I'm your servant in Christ Jesus. Please like and subscribe. 